guys, welcome back to another lesson in Swift for Beginners. In today's lesson, we will be covering protocols. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So a protocol is a pretty simple concept. Um, I don't want you to be intimidated by the fact that it's called a protocol. It sounds a lot fancier than it actually is. So a protocol is commonly referred to as one of two things, either a common contract or a blueprint. And we're going to kind of exemplify what a protocol is through an example. So what I want you to do is create two classes. The first one will be a car class. And right below it, let's do a class called BMW, which is a car from our um, what we learned about inheritance. And now we're going to create a protocol. So a protocol uh, holds functions and variables. Um, but it only holds their definition, not their actual body. So a function's body is everything in front of the in the curly braces, and a variable uh, in terms of a, in a protocol, the variable is just the name of it, the type, and if it's a get or a set. You don't actually assign the value of it. So let's say you had a variable color. You in the protocol, you would not say color is blue or red or whatever. You would just say, I have a variable that is called color. You can get it and set it. Um, kind of similarly, uh, what, once you have a protocol, a class can conform to it. And the term conform is kind of just a fancy way of saying that the class promises that everything that the protocol declares inside of it, be it a function or a variable, um, that class will have all of those things. So let's actually do one so we can see what the heck all that means. So to create a protocol, you literally type in protocol. You give the protocol a name, generally with a uppercase letter to start with. So let's call this um, car proto. And in here, we can define variables and functions. So let's start off with a variable called color. And instead of giving a value to it, rather before we do that, we want to give a type. So let's call it, let's make it a string. And what we're going to say is this color, whoever conforms to this, in other words, whatever class promises to have this, it should also have the ability to get it and set it. So get and set is a very common computer science uh, term and nomenclature and vocabulary. And what it's basically saying is, um, I need a way where I can get the value of whatever is in color, and I need a way to set more than once what the value of color is, this variable color. Similarly, we're going to define a function in here called, yeah, let's go with drive. Let's, we're going to call it drive. And notice we don't want to include these, the curly braces. We just declare the function. So this is a func called drive. It has no parameters. It has no results. Um, let's do another function called is all wheel drive, and this can return a bool. So this is kind of the nature of a protocol. It defines functions and variables that another class is going to promise to have and include and implement. So the class itself would have these functions and have the actual implementation of them in the curly braces. So if you're familiar with another programming language, uh, let's say Java, this is very, very similar to an interface. So if you're even if you're not familiar, if you're ever reading about interfaces um, on like a Stack Overflow example uh, for for sake of this video or anywhere online, this is very similar to an interface. So now that we have this protocol defined up here, it's kind of a contract we've laid out. How do we tell this BMW class to conform to it? The way we do that is after this car that we're inheriting from, we're going to comma separate and put in the protocol that it should conform to. And a class can conform to more than one protocol. Rather, it could be zero or more. And notice we're going to get an error here because that protocol basically has two functions and a variable, but our class at the moment doesn't have that. So if we actually go here and hit this little uh, warning icon, It'll ask if we want to have Xcode, this environment, automatically put the stubs in for the stuff we need. And we're going to hit this button to do that. And if we go back here, you'll notice that it included the variable and the two functions. 
And instead of having just a function definition here, which is just, just a signature without the body, here we have the actual body and we have this like uh, placeholder to actually put in um, some code. So we're just gonna do just gonna do return true so this doesn't give us an error. And what this is also gonna complain about is we don't have a initializer. So we're gonna again hit the thing, then hit fix, and it adds a Rather, I guess it didn't add a function, but what it actually did is it, it wanted us to have a value for this for this variable. Um, so if we don't have a value initially, we need to have a init function, and we can use this to initialize our var variable as we've done it in a prior lesson. And I believe that should be sufficient for the error to go away. Yep, which it is. So. The notion of a protocol kind of sets out uh, guardrails, if you will, for different types of classes, right? So let's say you have a car class and there's a couple different classes that are of type car. Let's say BMW, Mercedes, Lexus, Honda. All of those car classes need the ability to drive. Maybe you want the ability to get the color on it, set the color on the car. So. Uh, what you can do is you can create a protocol that's, um, let's say we, we would name it, in this case it's car proto, but a more appropriate name would be car configurable or car configuration. And each of those classes would conform, aka promise, that I have all the stuff that's defined in this protocol. Um, and I wanted to give you a real world example. Um, let's say you're charging in, in an iOS app, uh, I'm sure you've seen, people uh, offer in-app purchases, and let's say you're charging a user um, 99 cents to unlock the pro version of your app. So there is a protocol for the transaction object to observe when new transactions are put into um, the queue, which in other words, kind of just means you put uh, that 99 cent transaction into the shopping cart. And there is a protocol which listens for any changes on that shopping cart uh, type object. And every time there is a change, it calls a particular function. So the class where you actually have the user um, go and hit the buy now button to put that thing in the cart and present a confirmation screen, you need the function that says did complete purchase or did cancel purchase, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of that functionality is written by Apple in a protocol because as an engineer, as a developer creating your app, you don't want to have to write that functionality out in every single place in your app where you have uh, some payment option, right? You want to be able to conform to that protocol and implement those functions. So on that note, I wanted to cover one more thing regarding protocols before we quickly kind of summarize this and finish up. And that is um, the naming uh, style of delegates and data sources. So you may, you may have seen, if you haven't seen it already, you definitely will see that sometimes you'll see a protocol name be something like uh, something something delegate or something something data source. And then something something is usually a class. So let's say this would be car delegate or it could be car data source. So delegate and data source, what I want you to understand, and a lot of times people confuse this, um, and of course we have to change this down here because this doesn't exist anymore. Delegate and data source is a naming convention that Apple came up with around 10 years ago. And anything that's a delegate and data source, 99% of the time is just a protocol. It's just a literally just a naming convention. So don't get confused that it's something else. But the reason those naming conventions are heavily used and were chosen are for the following reason. A protocol that has the term delegate at the end of it as a suffix generally houses functionality, uh, aka functions, that deal with uh, user interaction. So let's say you have a button on the screen and you wanna have a protocol for what happens when the user taps the button. You might have a button delegate. And similarly, what happens when the person, when a user taps and holds on the button, that would also go in the button delegate. So a delegate is usually tied to functionality, 
in your code that needs to do, uh, rather that has to do um, user interaction stuff. Whereas a data source, as the name kind of implies, deals with data. So let's say a button needs, uh, let's say a button needs to know its color so we can set its background color. It can get that from a variable in the data source protocol, or it needs to, it needs to know the font color or font size. So in other words, the data source is more data related functionality and a delegate is generally more interaction, user interaction based functionality. Now, with that being said, take it with a grain of salt because it's just a naming convention. And I have personally seen um, those two things, delegates and data sources, used in different ways. But that is the popular naming convention that Apple has set forth. And if you go read through some of the code in some large company libraries like Google, for example, they do a very good job of following that pattern and staying consistent with it. And it really helps everyone at the end of the day because everyone kind of is on the same page and know uh, what delegate and data source are generally supposed to be doing. So it really makes developing and understanding other people's code a lot more easy. But we're going to be seeing delegates and data sources um, in other videos, uh, particularly probably another course in which we do more iOS specific development and we apply this uh, all this Swift uh, knowledge to making an iPhone app. So. With that being said, I'm going to end the lesson here. Um, so again, to, to recap, we covered what a protocol is, the fact that it can have functions, uh, it can have a variable, but again, it should not assign its value in here. You need to tell it the type. This get set specifies that you can, the class that will conform must be able to get and set. The notion of conforming is a class promising to include everything that the protocol has that it's conforming to. And down here, we have all of that stuff with these functions and this variable. And this is how we would uh, comma separate and say we conform to this protocol. And with that being said, I'm going to end the lesson right here. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, follow, subscribe, comment, uh, and I will see you in the next lesson.